Hello, everyone. My name is Yujiro Taniyama, and I'm an outspoken finalist for the U.S. State Department's Democracy Video Challenge. And today, I'd like to challenge a tough, sensitive, and a controversial issue between Japan and South Korea, so called the Comfort Woman. I do not wish to glorify or whitewash Japan's militaristic past. I mean, that's just disgusting. All I'm asking for is for you to judge this controversial issue based on the basic and the fundamental truth. And that is why I've come to speak in front of my fellow YouTube citizens around the world just like this, to beg you to at least you know, give me a chance to explain what this fundamental truth is all about. Since I do believe that is a fair and a balanced democratic process. So to begin with, ladies and gentlemen, before you head off to your favorite sushi bar tonight and order some California rolls, please drop by your nearest bookstore and get a book written by a prominent American historian and an author, Mr. Bruce Cummings. In his book, Korea's Place in the Sun, Mr. Cummings mentions that many women were mobilized to serve as prostitutes by Korean men. I repeat, I didn't say this, Mr. Cummings did. Many women were mobilized to serve as prostitutes by Korean men. You must be pretty surprised because I guess this is not what you've learned in the past. Probably you've learned that the Darth Vaders on the dark side of the Japanese were the Japanese soldiers who kidnapped thousands of Luke Skywalkers or Korean women and turned them into sex slaves. But unfortunately, that is not true. Let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen. On what basis do we simply decide that these so-called comfort women were former sex slaves who were kidnapped by the Japanese army, especially when a bright man like Mr. Cummings has already mentioned in his book that these so-called comfort women were recruited by Korean men. If you are a South Korean citizen watching this video, I guess it's the first time you've heard of this. Since in South Korea, you only have one government-designated textbook, which means... You know, they only jot down the things that benefit the South Korean government. But since everybody, guys, we live in the YouTube world of democracy and freedom of speech. And that is why, my South Korean friends, I strongly urge you to go to Amazon.com and get this great book written by Mr. Bruce Cummings. One click. And by the way, Mr. Cummings is not pro-Japanese. Rather, he's pro-Korean from my point of view. Because if you open the, the, the page, the, the first page, there's a map of Korean Peninsula. And uh, the Sea of Japan is, is printed as East Sea. The way the Korean people um, want it to be. But anyways, then let's think for a moment, guys. Why did Mr. Cummings mention what he mentioned in his book? It is because a significant number of Koreans and Korean recruiters actually cooperated with the Japanese recruiters from the private sectors in hiring women for sexual service. 
And furthermore, when the Allies, when I say Allies, I refer to the Americans, the, the British, the French, the Australians, and the Dutch. Okay. When the Allies moved in to the Japanese occupied territories at the end of the World War II, or even after World War II, because after Japan surrendered in 1945, the Allies came back to recolonize Asia, remember? The British came back to recolonize Myanmar, uh, Malaysia, um, uh, Singapore. The French came back to recolonize Vietnam, Cambodia. The Dutch came back to recolonize Indonesia. Well, the Australians, the British, and the Dutch, they all came back to recolonize Asia, fighting next four years of bloody war. But anyways, in this speech, let me focus on the point that when the Allies moved into the Japanese occupied territories at the end of the World War II, they too, ladies and gentlemen, they too were pretty much eager to enlist the comfort woman for further service. And that is why this disgraceful history of comfort woman is not simply about the victim belonging to one nationality and the victimizers to another. There's tons of blames to go around. Plenty of blames to go around. And that is why, guys, Mr. Bruce Cummings mentions in his book that the Japanese government and the South Korean government, both governments, for a long time, prefer to remain silent on this issue. Period. Full stop. Don't take me wrong. I'm not trying to rewrite history. And Japan is not trying to rewrite history here. Because we don't need to. We don't need to rewrite history. But we do need you to know the fundamental truth. Because that is exactly the essential factor in deciding for, for you to make decisions in the world of democracy we live in. Okay, let me tell you uh, one more thing. In 1965, when Japan and South Korea joined a peace treaty, okay, the South Korean government did not mention a single word about so-called comfort women. Not a single word. Isn't that weird? I think that's pretty awkward. Because if the Japanese army had actually kidnapped 200,000, that's huge, ladies and gentlemen, 200,000 Korean comfort women and turning them to sex slaves, like the South Korean government today is claiming, I mean, why didn't Park Chung-hee, then South Korean president back in 1965, why didn't Park Chung-hee mentioned a single word about it. It doesn't make sense if you're human 20 years after the war, 1965. It is because Mr. Park Chung-hee, he knew that these comfort women were well-paid sex workers. I mean, what, I mean, can you please think up of any other reason that makes sense? Furthermore, the two countries signed a peace treaty in 1965 and it officially ended the possibility for further claim against Japan. And in return, the South Korean government received direct grant of 300 million US dollars plus 200 million US dollars uh, as a loan and furthermore another 300 million US dollars as an investment from a private sector a private company I and mean, this is 9065 USD ladies and gentlemen it was huge amount of money especially for a poor country like Korea back in the 1960s they were really poor you know many Koreans that's what they uh, immigrated to America Many, you know, Korean Americans um, are in America today. But anyways, the fact is that the Japan and the South Korean government in 1965 signed a peace treaty. The South Korean side did not 
mention a word about so-called comfort woman, and this peace agreement officially ended the possibility of any further claim on behalf of the Korean on behalf of the Korean side, any claim further claim against Japan. Period. Therefore, this recent you know, these uh, claims by the South Korean government saying, oh, apologize, Japanese government, and pay money, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it is totally a nonsense, a fallacy, and a violation of international agreement, or international law, may I, may I call it. Because it was an official agreement between the two nations back in 1965. สวัสดีครับสบายมาแล้วครับพมไพลองเรียนนานาชาติสามปีที่สุขุมวิทสอสิพานะครับชอบบามีมูแดงเซมิลุกชิ้นสัต so that was Thai I love Thailand I I went to high school there and I love the people and I I love the beaches of Thailand and probably so so do you and one of my favorite um, beaches in Thailand is The Pattaya Beach, Prob probably you know about it. You've, some of you have already been to Pattaya Beach and done some parasailing and things. However, not many people today, I mean almost none, know that Pattaya Beach used to be an R&R &R paradise, meaning recreation and the relaxation hub for the American soldiers. Fighting the Vietnam War in the 60s and the 70s, which means that Pattaya Beach became big and famous as it is today, since the women who was in who were in Pattaya Beach then offered sexual service to the American soldiers. War and sex has always been like a hand in glove. In the history of mankind, guys, and comfort woman is no exception, no big deal, no big fuss whatsoever. In the history of mankind, however, guys, why is it that it is always and only this comfort woman issue that just popped up 50 years after the war? That Japanese military. Kidnap thousands of innocent Korean women and turn them into sex slaves. Why is it that it's only the comfort woman that's become such a big issue? Especially when a bright man like Mr. Bruce Cummings, an American historian, has mentioned in his book that many women were mobilized to serve as prostitutes by Korean men. But the world sees it as it was the the the, the, the all the blame. Goes to the Japanese army. Why is it that this comfort woman issue is so big? I mean, it is the only issue regarding war and sex in this 21st century today. I'll tell you why. The answer is simple. It is simply because, ladies and gentlemen, the Japanese government was and is nothing. But a total idiot. Full stop. About 20 years ago, in 1993, one erratic Japanese politician created a story where there wasn't a story. I repeat, please listen carefully here. Tw uh, around 20 years ago, one erratic Japanese politician in the Japanese government he created a story. Well, there wasn't a story. On August 4th, 1993, Kono Yohei, then the chief cabinet secretary of the Japanese government, she somehow, without any concrete proof, proof or um, evidence whatsoever, he suddenly apologized to the South Korean government and admitting and creating this image as though it was the Japanese troops who did who conducted 
all the atrocities or whatever you call it, the, 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 the word they call it, relating to the comfort woman during World War II. What? Beg your pardon? Beg your pardon me? As I've told you, a bright man like Mr. Cummings has already mentioned in his book, this is one of the evidences, okay, that many women were forced to service, mobilized to uh, service prostitutes by Korean men. Not the Japanese military. In spite of that, this ignorant, erratic politician, then the chief cabinet secretary, he just apologized. A shallow-minded man he was, and that apology has given South Korea a big political card. And it's definitely making Japan look like a Darth Vader today. Okay, I love the movie Star Wars. But what I want to tell you guys is that this man, the, the, the former chief cabinet secretary who apologized, was he was like Mr. Herman Cain, who was who used to be the, remember, the U.S. presidential candidate from the Republican Party a couple of months ago? And he didn't, he did not know that China has nuclear missiles, okay? He might be a great pizza man, but, pizza delivery man, but he needs to study a little more. And that goes the same with Kono Yohei. He was like a pocket of ignorance, apologizing as, and creating this image to the world as though it was totally Japanese the military's fault who kidnapped thousands of women and turned them into sex slaves, which is obviously not true, as I have been telling you. Let me show you two newspaper ads related to the comfort woman there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a newspaper ad that, recruit, that recruited the comfort woman. The first ad was posted on Keijo Nippo newspaper, which was published in Korea back in the, uh, uh, before 1945 in Korea. And this ad I'm showing you here is, was posted on the 26th of uh, July, 1944. And it reads, Comfort Woman Wanted. Uh, 300 yen monthly salary guaranteed. When a normal, average factory worker could only earn around 20 yen a month back then, this 300 yen salary, it meant around 50 time, 15 times more than an average pay. That was a quick buck, a quick grand, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show you one more newspaper ad, okay? Uh, this ad you've, right here, is uh, it was posted on the Mainichi uh, Nippon newspaper, which was also published um, in Korea before 1945. And this ad, newspaper ad, was posted on the 27th of October, 1944. And it reads, Comfort Woman Wanted, ages from 18 to 30. If you're interested, Come for a job interview from between the 27th of October and 8th of November, 1944. So guys, as you see, these two ads are no different from any other ads we see today recruiting sex workers. For example, on Craigslist or in any sort of yellow tabloid newspaper in your country today. And that is why Mr. Cummings had mentioned in his book that they were recruited, not kidnapped for God's sake, recruited and that by Korean men. You know, it is totally ridiculous to blame this whole issue on the Japanese army. When in fact, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain to you in a more simple way. What was Japan doing during the World War II? Or 1944, 45, 43, 42? That's right. They were fighting war against 
uh, uh, America and uh, uh, Britain. Well, England, they, they, they uh, surrendered re re really fast. But anyways, they were fighting war, Japanese military. They had no time to run a sex ball. Are you joking? That is why it was a sex mis business ran, that was ran by the Japanese Yakuza tick recruiters who cooperated with the Korean Yakuza tick recruiters. Okay? The Korean recruiters cooperated with the Japanese in hiring these women, as Mr. Cummings has mentioned in his book, Amazon.com. Okay? And to further give you an evidence, guys, the South Korean government, even today, is searching for the descendants or, or, or the grandchildren or the great-grandchildren of those Koreans who cooperated with the Japanese before 1945. And you know what? They suddenly give you a call. And they, they tell you, excuse me, your grandpa or great-grandpa had cooperated with the Japanese in recruiting comfort women before 1945. Therefore, you are convicted. Your whole, whole bloody family is convicted. And you'll be deprived of your assets, your house, your land, blah, 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 blah. According to the South Korean law. It's a legitimate act in South Korea. South Korea is a scary country, ladies and gentlemen. Those guys who, you know, the descendants of the great-grandchildren of those uh, Koreans you know, who, who co cooperated with the Japanese, they don't owe any responsibility. So, so do we, the Japanese today, today's generation. We love Pokemon. We love Naruto. We love Pocket Monster and everything. You know, the, so, the, the PlayStation Wii, whatever. Why? I mean, I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't know why I'm saying this, but the fact is that the Koreans, young Koreans today, are being convicted because their grandpa, great-grandpa, had cooperated with the Japanese. And that includes the, the recruitment of comfort women as well, of course. What was the Japanese army doing? We were fighting war, guys. We didn't have to... They didn't have time to run a sex parlor, for God's sake. They were fighting war. Of course, it was the Japanese soldiers who actually had se sexual intercourse with these so-called comfort women. But that is no different from the American soldiers who had sexual intercourse with the women in Pattaya Beach, Thailand, back in the 1960s and the 70s, the, during the Vietnam War. However, as I've been telling you, thanks to this, this uh, apology, this this. Incomprehens incomprehensible apology made by the former Chief Cabinet Secretary back in 1993, August 4th. This man did not even study no... Sh well, anyways, thanks to that apology he made 20 years ago, it's been like a, like, like a what do you say? Uh, I mean, it was definitely a suicide bomber. We are losing, fighting a losing war here, guys, J the Japanese, because of that single apology by the ex-chief cabinet secretary 20 years ago. And he was, as I said, he was Herman Cain of the Japanese government. A totally, he was a pocket of ignorance. He should have studied before he had made that statement. But anyways, thanks to his apology, the South Korean government, they've succeeded, guys. Oh, yeah. They've succeeded in creating this horrific image that the Japanese army were like Darth Vader's horrific image, that they were like Hitler who sent six million Jews to Auschwitz. I mean, I am sorry, but these two issues are a totally different issue. The Jews sent to the Auschwitz or the Birkenau, they were victims, total victims. But the comfort women, they were paid, ladies and gentlemen. They were paid. 
However, the South Koreans or the South Korean government is trying to mix it into one. I mean, treat the both issues as though they belong to the same planet. I mean, that is why I feel this issue is very much politically motivated, especially it came out 50 years after the war. It suddenly came out 50 years after the war. And, and the Herman Cain of Japan, Japanese government apologized, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's a losing war here, guys, for the, for, on behalf of the Japanese side. But you know what? About five months ago, in April this year, end of April, I personally visited the Auschwitz, Poland, uh, Birkenau, and to, 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 to send my humblest and the most sincerest uh, prayers to those six million Jews in, in, in Birkenau, in Auschwitz. But I'm sorry, but the comfort woman, I know that from the human rights point of view, the ethical point of view today, we value human rights very much in, in this 21st century. I, I'm totally with you. But, of course, from the human rights point of view, my deepest sympathy goes with those ex so-called comfort women, Korean comfort women, who came out and disclosed their unfortunate past 50 years after the war. However, guys, it does not change the fundamental, the, 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 the basic fundamental truth of history, that they were sex workers who received decent amount of money, 300 yen, when an ordinary factory worker was received only 20 yen in return for sex service. And you know what? There is this notion or many people believe that, especially the Western journalists, if you're watching this, um, or I don't mean to challenge you, but I have a question for you, okay? I did ask you on, before that, on what basis do we decide that these so-called comfort women were, f were forced sex slaves by the Japanese government? Especially when a bright man like Mr. Cunnings has already mentioned in his book, they were not. They were recruited, many of them were recruited by Korean men. We are already off the track here, off the fundamental truth. Okay? And furthermore, I want to ask you one more thing. If you Google comfort woman today, you see uh, the, these, um, uh, the journalists are jotting down on their blogs or whatever that it was a forced sex slave. But this sex slave, the term sex slave, is it's everywhere on this planet today, unfortunately, from the Japanese side. But on what basis are these Western journalists writing? You know, they, 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 yeah, why are they, on what grounds are they writing that they were for sex slaves? Probably, no, no doubt, they're writing it because they blindly trust blindly accept every single word that had, has been spoken by the ex-Korean comfort woman. But, if you want to look into history in a fair and balanced manner, just like the Fox News, fair and balanced, there has to be an evidence or a proof that backs up these testimonies. Otherwise, you know, humans, I don't want to say this, but you, you know, Anybody who looks innocent sometimes becomes evil. They stab people and murder them to death. You never know. Okay? Of course, from the human rights perspective, my sympathy goes with those ex comfortable. But I don't want to tell you that isn't it a little... It will lead to some jeopardy to blindly trust these confessions of these women in the late 80s or 90s who came out 50 years after the war, it's like, it's like you, you call an Aflac 50 years after your house was burnt down saying, excuse me, can you compensate me? Okay, of course, it's not the same thing, but I have this image like that. For example, one of the ex-Korean comfort women, Kim Haksun, 
she confessed that she was forced back in 1991. However, however, ladies and gentlemen, the professor of the Seoul University, Professor Ahn Byung-jik, he has stated already in the past, after that, that many comfort women are testifying that they had been forced. However, neither in Japan nor South Korea, not a single evidence exists to prove it. I didn't say this. The professor An byung Jik of Seoul University said it in 2006. He also mentioned, Mr. An, that we ought to know that the falsification has been conducted by, in some means or, or, or the other, by these so-called comfort women. And that Mr. Professor R also stated that it is totally unthinkable that these women were forced unconditionally. Period. I mean, why on earth did the Jap Japanese military ha have to force these women? I mean, th they didn't have to because they were paid, well paid, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? Can I tell you just one more thing? Not many Western journalists, or hardly none, somehow mentions this. But there were actually quite a few, I mean, a lot of Japanese comfort women during World War II. But you know what? Not a single one of them, not a single one of ex-Japanese comfort women has ever demanded an, apolo an apology or compensation towards the Japanese government. And you know why? Because they knew and they know that they were sex workers who earned quick grand in return for sex service. Period. My name is Yujiro Taniyama, and I am an outspoken finalist for the U.S. State Department's Democracy Video Challenge, and I am not trying to rewrite history here. Don't take me wrong. I despise narrow-minded tribalism. I grew up in the Western educational system. I went to primary school in South Australia. I went to international school in uh, Bangkok. Okay, So I was educated in a democratic system where you value human rights and human dignity. And that is why I am focusing on history here. I could just not tolerate this propaganda that's going on, this kind of, uh, what do you say, you know, it's backed up by this evil will or something. I don't know, but I just thought I had to come out and talk to my fellow YouTube citizens around the world. I, I know some of you will want to, you know, assassinate me with polonium in sushi, but please don't. I love sushi. Especially tunas. But anyways, let me tell you just one thing before I conclude this speech. On the 15th of June 2012, Choson Ilbo newspaper. Well, Choson Ilbo newspaper is like, uh, it's, it's one of the biggest newspapers in Korea. You can check it on chosenonline.com. Okay, anyways, this Korean, South Korean newspaper, they... Um, they uh, wrote an article, okay, this year, a couple of, uh, two or three months ago, with the title, Shameful Reality, South Korea, world's one of the biggest exporters of prostitutes, okay? 
Of course, it's nothing got to do with the comfort woman issue. But, but let, let me just at least explain the background of this issue. Okay? The Koreans have had a long history of red light district system or sex parlor system called Kisen. Since the days of the Koryo dynasty, which was founded in 918 AD. We weren't born then, ladies and gentlemen. And the girls in very early teens became from the poor family in Korea. They were sold to these parlors. And this Kisan system had lasted until just eight years ago, 2004. Until then, sex, sex workers, prostitutes, it was total, totally legal in Korea. So, I, I'm not justifying myself, okay? I'm just explaining the history of red light district system in Korea. So, over 1,100 years, this, I, I don't, I don't want to call it cultural tradition, but in a way it was a custom. The Koreans were accustomed to this custom of key, called the Kisan system, in which sex labor was nothing to be ashamed of. And that is why, on the 15th of June 2015, Joseon Ilbo, one of the biggest newspapers in Korea, they wrote an article saying that, I mean, condemning the Korean themselves of going outside of Korea as prostitutes and that is, you know, m many Korean women are doing that and that is causing bad reputation for the country. And in that article, there was a, a, a graph um, that was made by the U.S. State Department in 2006 saying that 23.5% 23 of all the prostitutes or sex workers in America are Korean. That means one-fourth of the prostitutes in America, they are Korean. Second was Thai, 11.7%. Third was Puerto Rican, 10%. Which means the Korean women are by far ahead in America. And also in Canada and Australia. Sex workers, Korean sex workers, it's, it's, it's becoming a big issue. On the 13th of June, 2012, in Houston, Texas, uh, this massage parlor run by uh, the, the, the the South Korean woman, um, they were the, the 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 massage girls were arrested because they were offering sex service in Houston, Texas, this county called the Harris Tech uh, County or something. If you Google it, you'll find it. But I am just telling you that in two thousand four, this Kisan system, the, the the sex labor became illegal in Korea, finally and for all. Now they're going out out of Korea to earn some quick buck outside of Korea. For example, America. One-fourth of the prostitutes in America today are Koreans. And to, uh, uh, in this article, it said in Korea today, although it's illegal, still there are 1,890,000 sex workers or prostitutes in Korea today. And it was, I mean, this is a data from one of the ministries in Korea, uh, the, the Women's Family Ministry or something like that. Please just check for yourselves. I am telling you this. I mean, okay, I'm not trying to rewrite history about comfort women here. I'm just, at least, you know, I'm just telling you the fundamental truth of the, this history of red light district system in Korea. Well, I'm, I'm sweating a little, ladies and gentlemen. But thank you for watching this video. But before I finish my speech, let me just please say one more thing. Why is it that the people in the West somehow believe that the geishas are prostitutes? Many Westerners do, I know, by experience. But actually, they are not. Geishas are artists. Artists who's mastered art of entertainment, such as singing, dancing, playing uh, koto shamisen, these uh, uh, traditional Japanese instruments, as well as performing tea ceremonies. 
Therefore, it's nothing but, but, but a common widespread myth, guys, that geishas are prostitutes. Go ask Ken Watanabe or somebody. He'll, he'll answer the same thing. And that myth, this blindly b believing this myth, goes the same with the comfort woman. You go to New York, you go to Australia, you go to Prague or wherever, you ask them about comfort women. They, they will answer, oh, forced sex slaves by the Japanese army? But unfortunately, guys, that is wrong. I think I've, I, I, I've mentioned my part in this video. Myth is nothing but a myth. Geisha and comfort women. The Western world both believe the myth is nothing but a myth. All I'm asking for is for you to judge this issue based on an actual fundamental truth. Otherwise, what? Are the Japanese, new ge generation Japanese today like myself, are we going to have to uh, keep on apologizing for thousands of years? Well, I, I don't mind. I like apologizing. But it has to be fair and balanced, just like the Fox, uh, Fox News. If I'm supposed to apologize, I will apologize. But I do want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that the, this recent claim that 200,000 Korean women were, were abducted by the Japanese army and turned into sex slaves, you know, it's been claimed by the South Korean government. The Korean Americans in America, as well as Mike Honda, the congressman in the U.S. Well, somehow he had, he's, I, I think he's originally, he, he's, uh, his grandpa was Japanese. I mean, I don't know, but the fact is, my personal view is that Mr. Honda is also the same as Mr. Herman Cain. Pretty ignorant, I believe. I must say, those claims by the South Korean government is nothing but an attempt to challenge or set a world record for blatant lies. We have to focus on the truth. Otherwise, we will be misled to a wrong planet. I do not deny this issue of comfort women, but I do deny that they were forced sex slaves by the Japanese government. If you don't believe me, just please go on, get the book written by an American author, Mr. Bruce Cummings. Of course, he is not pro-Japanese. Rather, I've told you that he's pro-Korean. But in spite of that, even Mr. Cummings mentions that many women were recruited by Korean men. That is a fundamental fact, truth. You got to know that if you don't want to become Mr. Herman Cain in the future. I mean, of course, he's a great pizza man, a businessman. However, there is just one exception. And that is the case with Mrs. Jan Ruf O'Herne, who was a Dutch woman in her late teens when Japan took over Indonesia, kicked out the Dutch after 350 years of colonial rule. Then some arrogant Japanese military officers set up a brothel in Indonesia, sex parlor, and forced Mrs. Jan Ruff O'Herne and her Dutch peers to work as sex slaves. This was totally conducted by the Japanese military. It was a total violation of human rights, human dignity, and no words are simply sad enough to express the agony and the emotions they had gone through. However, that's not the end of the story. When the high-ranked Japanese military officer, Lieutenant Colonel 
Orojima Kaoru, he flew from Tokyo and found out about this brothel, okay, which started in February 1944, okay. When the lieutenant colonel found out about this brothel, he immediately ordered the shutdown of the brothel, and those in charge were later punished under the international law and were convicted. Therefore, Mrs. Yanruf Oferne and her peers were forced to work as sex slaves by the Japanese military in Indonesia for two whole months. It must have been tough. It was a total violation of human rights. They were the victims. And this Mrs. Yanruf Oherne issue is significant since it demonstrates that the Japanese army did not accept any sort of forced sex labor during World War II. And that is why they shut it down the moment they found it out. Lieutenant Colonel Oda Jimakaru, he ordered the immediate shutdown. And those in charge were later punished under the international law. Some say they were hanged. Please check the rest of the history for yourselves. But I do want to say that this Mrs. Young Ralph O'Hearn issue, case, it is decisively important since it, in interpreting what happens when the military finds out when a woman had been forced. I am a proud and Japanese, proud and dignified Japanese citizen. And I am not here. I have not come out here, here on YouTube to whitewash or glorify Japanese military, militaristic past. That's disgusting. I told you. I'm not trying to rewrite history here. We don't, Japan does not need, we don't need to do, rewrite history. But we do need you to know the actual truth. And the truth is that regarding the comfort woman, this Mrs. Yanruf O'Hearner case and the comfort woman, it's totally a different issue. However, the Western PR media tries to put it into one fruit jar and mix it up and turn, turn it into a fruit juice. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the Mrs. Yanruf O'Hearn and her Dutch peers, they were the victims and those in charge were later punished by the, uh, under the international law. Some were hanged, some people say. However, comfort women, they were paid prostitutes and they were not the victims of sex slavery. That is the stance of the majority of Japanese today. That's what I believe. At least. Because as I told you, there were tons of Japanese comfort women back then. They received decent amount of money, but they haven't demanded an apology. Or compensation. Some historians say that the majority of the comfort women were even Japanese. So, all I'm asking for, you, for, is to divide these issues. Don't mix it up. Because that is what's making this comfort woman so confusing and complicating. Period. I know that Japan's fighting a losing war here, guys. We're in a tight position here. Because thanks to, you know, that Apology by, you know, which was not based on truth, by this uh, erratic Japanese politician, as well as the propaganda by the Western PR media. But, lastly, I do hope that this little speech of mine I'm making right here in front of you will reach the conscience of some of you before the whole world is brainwashed by the Western PR and media like it happened 10 years ago around 10 years ago in 2003 Iraq war WMD weapons of mass destruction when Saddam Hussein was found in this rabbit hole in Tikrit, Iraq in 2003 I think, I, I think it was December looking like Colonel Sanders of Kentucky Fried Chicken did he possess weapons of mass destruction 
Ladies and gentlemen, did he? As the Western PR media had said. And that is why the Nobel Prize winner for anti apartheid, uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, he recently stated and, clay, uh, and, uh, and criticized the Western power politics as double standard, saying, why doesn't Mr. Tony Blair and Mr. George W. Bush, why aren't they sent to Hague, the International Court of Justice, and tried for their, the blatant lies they made during the Iraq War, WMD. Mr. Desmond Tutu, Archbishop, he's saying that it's always been the African peers and the Asian peers who are always sent to this International Court of Justice. And they are tried, and many of them convicted. But, concerning the Western leaders, it seems there's a different standard, a double standard. They are never taken. The winners of World War II, I guess. They're never taken to the place of justice. And when I read that article of those statements by Archbishop Desmond Tutu, I strongly felt an urgent need to come out in the public to let you know the fundamental truth of history before the whole world is totally brainwashed by something that is not true. My deepest sympathy, I repeat, my deepest sympathy goes with those ex-comfort women who came out disclosing their unfortunate past. But that is a different issue. I'm asking for truth here. And the final decision is up to you, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you probably you want to put polonium into my sushi. But we live in a democratic world, ladies and gentlemen. We have to solve this issue in a fair and balanced manner. And I do hope, lastly, that some of you will read the fundamental truth from my very lips. Thank you very much.